Blast me to Electia. It's time for the Mad Merlin's Warhammer 40,000 Empyrean Journey. Issue 57, Part 2. Gallery and Mission. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Mad Merlin's Imperium Journey. So we're back with issue 40, 57 and here we have the completed Tomb Blade and I did go for how the magazine uh, suggested. Though they did glue a little off tilter but that was my fault for leaving them and coming back to it the next day. But here we have our finished Tomb Blade with the twin Tesla carbines all ready to use in today's mission. And yeah, I've done him up to the battle ready level in a Sautec Dynasty colour scheme. And I think he looks quite good there. I do have a few points to point out. This issue's um, construction guide is a little off. It tells you to put the uh, exhaust vents here on the opposite sides to the sides they're meant to actually go. And I believe there was something else wrong, but I can't quite remember what it was now. Uh, oh yeah, um, I noticed that they had the arms attached when you put the pilot in, but then later on they're telling you to attach the arms. So quite a few mistakes in the build guide, but... I managed to get the guy the Tomb Blade finished. And he's ready to join his buddy here. So let's have a quick look then at the two army lists we've got to choose from today. And then we'll get into our battle report. So here we have our mission for issue 57, and it is called Forcing a Breach. And we see two forces that oppose each other, trying to make a breach through the opposition's defence into the Electia Hive. So, for our Necrons then, we've got a HQ selection in the form of Destroyer Lord, Royal Warden and Plasmancer all together. And then we've got two choices of lists. So we've got two squads of 10 warriors, five mortals, two tomb blades, two crypto thralls, and a triumph stalker for one list. Then for army list two, we've got three scorpion destroyers, one plasma site, two squads of three scarabs, a spider, a wraith, and five flayed ones. While I do quite like the up close and personal list, I am going to go for list one myself. I will try the triumph stalker again. Plus we get to try out our new tomb blade. So you want to think about the HQ selections. Some benefit units from both lists, while as some might benefit only units from one list. Uh, you might want to think about how many units you have. More units for con test controlling objectives would be pretty important to this mission, but you might also want to have um, fewer, fewer units, fewer models, and go with more of a focus on melee than you but you have to think about your opponent's army as well as your own for the imperium side we have a canoness tech priest dominus and a tech priest engine seer quite a random collection of hqs i thought they would have had one from each of them but as it is two of the adeptus mechanicus and one from the sisters and our first Army list consists of the ten sisters, the five seraphim, the four repentia, the superior, the archiflagellants, the penitent engine, three aggressors, five intercessors, and five intercessors. Army list two is a little less on the numbers. We've only got ten Skatari rangers, three cataphron destroyers, three aggressors, and two squads of five assault intercessors there. So again, you want to think, do you want to go for controlling as many objectives as you can and outlasting or outlasting your opponent with um more defensive capabilities. You also want to factor in your opponent's army. I think, personally, I do enjoy playing with the sisters at the moment more than I do the Skatari. Because I think we haven't got much in the way of choice for Skatari. So we could definitely do with a few extra units to 
make them a bit more enjoyable. So I'm going to go for, again, Army List 1, because we get all the sister stuff, plus we do get our Space Marines as well. So they'll add a little bit of extra to the Army List. So, this is our mission. So we've got a pretty, we've got two mats to set up four action objectives, but they've only shown us number of objectives here. So we'll be putting down four obje um, action objectives in its place. We got the breach and secure, breach slash secure action. So one unit Tommy Army may start this action at the end of their movement phase. Whilst it is a range of an action marker, the action is completed at the end of your next command phase, so long as you are still holding that objective. So yeah, it's a very objective-based mission. And like I said, it's about creating a breach in the defense. So the attackers, which I'm guessing will be the Necrons, yeah, must secure the weak points in the fortress. So they're the attackers. So they are trying to breach, whereas the Imperial forces are trying to make the the um, defences more securing. So I will try and set up terrain as I see fit. So I'll try and make it look like it's kind of a uh, wall sort of thing, maybe. Or maybe just a small scattering of city ruins. But yeah. As we've got a nice lot of um, pipes and stuff now, we can make some really interesting layouts. So I will get the battlefield set up. And I'll be right back. So here we are all set up and it's quite a slobber knocker of a mission that's like it. So as I said earlier, we've gone for uh, Army List 1. So we have maximised amount of models as we can. The Imperium has put two units in strategic reserve in the form of the Arco Flagellants and the Aggressors. Even though the Arco Fragments have the speed, they could do with being um, getting on from a table edge and add a security of moving up the table. The Aggressors, they're slow, so they need to go in Strategic Reserve to hopefully get a bit closer to the enemy. The Seraphim have gone into Sky Strike. And for the Necrons, I put my two blades into Strategic Reserve just to um, hopefully get them on the board and shooting stuff before they get blasted away. So I've gone for the Triarch Stalker in the centre with the two units of warriors either side of it, the Scorpec Lord out on one flank, the Royal Warden and the Mortals, plus the Plasma Plasmancer and Crypto Falls on the other. Then I split the Imperial the Space Marine forces, so I've got one squad of assault intercessors on either flank, sisters in the middle with the Repentia, then they've got the Tech Priest Engine Seer and Dominus, and then the Arco Fragilent Pentinent Engine there. So we have four objectives, and these are action objectives. So we are to try and either uh, breach or secure those points. So we'll make sure we start the action at the end of the movement phase, and then luckily, then the action is completed in our next command phase. So we need to hold those for a good turn to hopefully score us some valuable points. Right then, that's deployment sorted. Let's get on with some dramatic reading. Forcing a breach. The Necron invasion of Electia has left a swathe of destruction across the moon. The Necron legions have now reached the outer walls of the Basilica of St. Marcius. Their probing attacks have detected a series of weak points in the fortifications. By attacking and detonating explosive devices in these key positions, they may force a breach into the Basilica's walls and hasten the demise of the Imperial forces within. Necrons, Scorpec Lord, Breakthrough. The Necrons must force a breach in the Imperium's defensive perimeter. In order to do so, they will first have to exploit weaknesses they have discovered and storm the breach before the Imperium can rally its defenders to hold the line and drive the numberless hordes back into no man's land. Imperium, Canoness, hold your ground. As the senior officer in charge of the Basilica's defence, the Canoness finds itself tasked with rallying the Adeptus Aratas, Adeptus Astartes, and Adeptus Mechanicus defenders, and buying time for the Tech Priests to secure the walls. 
To aid her in this task, she may draw upon the best forces from each allied faction. So there we have it. With the forces split across the battlefield, it's time to enact the ritual of who gets first turn. Before that, let's talk about secondary objectives. The Scorpic Lord is going to try and weaken the opponent's forces by slaying its Warlord, which is the Canoness. And for the Imperium, they are going for um, hold ground, so we need to control more than half the amount of objectives and get points at the end of the turn. So, with that in mind, let's get the roll off for first turn. That's a tie. And that's the Necrons with a six. So, here we go then with Necron turn one. So that's it for turn one of the Necrons. Everything advanced upwards, getting in a position. We've started the breach action here on this objective with the squad of Necron warriors. And just wait till the end of the command phase next turn in order to score five points. So with that on mind, it's time for Imperium turn one. Just a quick update to Necron turn one. You can't activate the objective to turn the advance, so I pulled them back four inches, which is their advance roll, and they still managed to reach the three inch range of the objective and activate it. So now on to Imperium turn one. Okay, end of Imperium turn one. I brought the Seraphim in early during the reinforcement step so we could sit on an objective. And we've also moved the sisters up normally. Everything else in the army advanced, with the exception of the engines here, who didn't need to make much in the way of his movement role, movement adjusting roles to get over the terrain. But everything else has advanced up and ready to start taking some objectives. The sisters, first four were in range of the Necrons, but I uh, didn't score any wounds. I scored three hits, but three ones don't benefit me any wounds. So with that, it is time then for the Necrons. Turn two. I just want to show something here. This is the saves from the Seraphim against the Tesla Carbines. Of which I have a two up save because I'm in ruins. Six ones. Six ones. That. <sighs> yeah, okay. All right, well, that's them not scoring that objective. Okay. All right, continuing with Necrons turn two. Sorry about that. There we go. So, end of Necron's turn two, and it's been a not very good turn for the Imperium, I'm afraid. So, as I mentioned earlier, the Tesla Carbines eliminated the Seraphim on the objective. So they won't be scoring that, but they will be scoring the one back here because they are still Sisters Alive. Necrons have activated two objectives again to breach. I knew I shouldn't have got greedy spending all my miracle dice on the heat ray shots because it was only minus one. I would have probably saved a lot of those. But it is what it is, and I'm going to have to do, uh, think about reorganizing my attack strategy. But here we go then. It is Imperium's turn two. So we're going to be able to bring on our strategic reserves and hopefully add some extra backup because we've got a lot of models that need taking out over this side. I might hold them off so that they come in from the rear. I'll wait and see how things go. Here we are then with Imperium turn two. End of the Imperium's turn two and things went pretty well. Oh, excuse me. So we advanced normally, no normal moves. Up the board, got some good shooting going with the Assault Intercessors killing one of the Necron Warriors and the Penitent, en Penitent Engine doing no damage with its Heavy Flamers, sadly. 
In the charge phase, things went better. The Repentia and the Mistress all made their charges into the Scorpec Lord and proceeded to butcher him. Thanks, though, I dropped a command point for the Resurrection Protocols command uh, stratagem. And with a command reroll, I managed to get him back and he's on free. But they consolidated into the Triarch Stalker, so they've tied him up. Assault phase over here, the Assault Intercessors charged in and butchered uh, six of the nine remaining warriors there. And the Penitent Engine charged in and killed two of the Immortals. They activate, Imperium managed to activate two objectives this turn. If they still hold them at the end of the next command phase, they'll score two, uh, ten points. The Necrons can't score here because the Imperium now have more models than them on the objective, so they will no longer be able to score that for five. But they do score five on that on the end of their command phase. So moving on to their command phase then, it's time for the Necrons turn. Three, oh, and one last thing, the Ser Sisters passed their morale test, lost three with a three on a dice, plus leadership one from the Canoness, they passed it up plenty to spare. So here we go then with in Necron, turn three. Whew! Necron turn three was heated. Um, the Scorpic Lord went down yet again. He charged the sisters who fired Overwatch. And thanks to loads of sixes on that Flamers to Wound roll, yeah, he couldn't make all his uh, four-up saves. So he died gloriously trying to kill the Canoness. But it's going to have to fall to one of his underlings to try and achieve that victory. Everywhere else, the Pentine Engine finally went down, thanks to a combination of mortal wounds from this guy and attacks. The Repentia and Triarch are tied. The Repentia have lost, so they will take a morale test. And so will them at the end of their turn, that poor sergeant over there, but he's holding the objective, which is the important thing. So we're on to Imperium turn three, and we're away to score 15, uh, 10 points. But sadly, due to the consolidation moves of all these units, we no longer control this one, so we can't get our controlling over half this turn. Hopefully when we eliminate a few more units, maybe things will look different. But here we go then with Imperium turn three. End of Imperium turn three. With the reinforcements come in, it has slightly turned the tide. I have scored the 10 points I mentioned. And I've reactivated those two objectives. I'm still within three as I moved into the cover to give myself some extra protection. First off though, we need some morale tests. So here we've lost a total of three this turn. So I'll discard a Miracle Dice just to guarantee I pass that. So they're fine. And the Assault Intercessor, he lost. Uh, all of his brothers, so he needs a one. He gets a one! There we go. So he's fine, he's holding his nerve in that ruin there. Other than that though, things haven't gone too well. Managed to kill one Crypto Thrall, but he reanimated. And... One is wounded, but he'll heal that at the start of the Necrons' turn anyway. So the Necrons will score a single set of five points for their home objective that they have managed to control the entire game. It just has to see what happens with the rest of these objectives. So here we go then with Necron turn four. End of Necrons turn four. We've wiped out the Assault Intercessors and Dominus here. We've activated the objective again. 
And that's about it, really. The two blades moved out and shot the assault intercessor sergeant that was hiding in the cover. And also put a wound on the aggressors with the Teslas. But the way things are, it's late in the game. It's a tie at the moment. It's only going to be a tie again in another turn. So it's a draw. That's all I can say. It is a draw. Nobody managed to score their secondary objective. As we didn't manage to control over half for the Imperium. And we didn't slay the enemy warlord for the Necrons. So there we have it then. That will be the end of issue 57. So looking forward into the future. Issue 58 we get our second Canop Deck Wraith. As well as a brand new battle mat. We get some updated paint guides for Canop Deck creatures including the Scarabs. And we also learn about choosing army lists. Issues 59 and 60, we get the Outriders Part 1 and 2. So we get a brand new unit finally for our Space Marines. It's been a while. Build and paint our bikes. And we use power ratings for the first time. So we actually learn all about using the power ratings on our data sheets. So I might replay this mission later just for myself because I forgot a lot of stuff. Things uh, would have been different if I'd remembered that I can't claim an objective if I shot. So yeah, I'm definitely going to have to replay this one. So we'll mark this up as a um, learning curve. And I'll replay this mission later on today if I feel like it. And hopefully things will be a bit different. And I'll let you guys know in a extra video. But that is it. Um, so yeah. Thank you all for watching. Be sure, of course, to like, comment, share and subscribe for more mad content. And I will see you next time for issue 58 of Imperium. Goodbye.